No clue what the frick that is. What's in the room with Shawl Magic, but let me get you close. And welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. In our last video, we got introduced to our characters. Uh, Monica, Sayori, Natsuki, and Yuri. And last video, we basically, well again, just got to meet them and do a few things or whatever. And I don't know, these two guys had to fight, whatever, Sayori came in and saved the day, and whatever. And for some reason, there's a black screen here. And in case you guys are kind of behind right now, this is meant to be a cursed dating game. Which I'm just gonna get right into it because the record because it does take quite a while. So whatever. Hint, you can use skip button to fast forward through text you've already read. Oh. But I, I just got here. Whatever. So I'm writing my second poem. And um yeah, why like why is Monica not here? Like, is Monica an actual option for us for having a girlfriend, or is it she not? Because that's quite weird, because it starts off with, like, four beautiful girls and things like that. But now, yeah, Monica's not even there. That's weird. Alright, Doki Doki! Oh. Did the game just lag? Vibrant. Oh, there we go. Don't know what happened then. Uh, whistle, skipping. Okay, we get a lot of the sugar. Dark. Grief. Peaceful. Oh, Valentine. I okay, you click something without asking. Uh, I don't know. Swimsuits. Okay, no. <laughs> Laugh. Um, stop double clicking. What the frick? Hair. Um, loud. Milk. Um, uh, rose. Lipsteco. Oh, it hurts. Sunset. What's going on? Uh, something's not right right now. Whatever. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little bit more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Quibble! Oh, the, the chick. Dang it. Ah, oh, they're off right now. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm, I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get in a good... You in a get good mood. Yeah. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? Th th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? eh? Why, wh why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Why do you want- Yoink! Hey! No. Uh, uh... Sari nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Uh -huh. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair! How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming into the club room. So either you're not hungry or, and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry! <laughs> and so that only leaves the one option. Ah! I give up! Don't make me feel guilty! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face in her book as always. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, I, I wasn't listening or anything! Oh, you clearly were. It was just a, 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 something in my book. Yuri! Tell Google to let me borrow some money! That's... Don't get me involved like, like that, Siri. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough for retribution. Uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh, oh no. Ha 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 ha! I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. It doesn't happen much, but it's fun side of you. That's... Uh, there's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. <laughs> that! <laughs> Still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, inside of everyone, and it saved me too. <laughs> That's... 
Don't let her fool you. Sarah knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you would have come if I, if I went for the cupcakes. So I had to trick that Tsuki into making them. Come on, give me the, some credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> oh, what? Did I just smack her? Ah! Break you! I don't know, as something smacks Sayori in the face and stumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Eh? A, a cookie! The frick? <laughs> sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Eh, is this a miracle? <gasps> is it because I paid my wrist... Restitution? Retribution. <laughs> Actually, that one almost worked. Ha <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blot about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Ha <laughs> ha Natsuki! That's so nice of you! I'm so happy! Siori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. <laughs> Siori, Siori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good! <laughs> I slowly leave the classroom. <laughs> Siori suddenly claps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue! I'm bleeding! Oh gosh, get help! Get help! Quibble! I'm still walking away from the classroom. <laughs> I put nails in it. I am left in school. Oh, okay, sorry. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. So, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Siri get oh. <laughs> Sierra gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. <laughs> I like how the movements are when they move the, um, the, like, the, the avatars or whatever close to the characters or whatever. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sierra's off her. Oh! Uh, Sierra suddenly needs to take a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. <laughs> hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sierra trots away to safety. <laughs> I'm going to frickin' mad Ayo! Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ooh. Uh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her late today? Not me! Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. What, you mean boyfriend? Oh, she could have a boyfriend and that's why. She's probably more des uh, des desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> that's true. Excuse me? Uh <laughs> Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Who's your new get? Who's your new boyfriend? Wait, what? <clears throat> Nothing. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend? <laughs> what on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? What? Did you just double click again? Oh, come on! Well, my last period today was study hall. Oh. Oh, never mind. I don't. I don't mind. <laughs> to be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I was in a way you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica! That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Hey! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Quibble. Monica smiles sweetly. 
Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> don't worry. Hmm. hmm. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, no, not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escape. <laughs> I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappears into the closet. Quibble! Quibble! Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from the other classroom! Want to come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival is coming up! Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff! So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks! Oh, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Hey! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon! Uh, are you going with Cribble to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Aww, but I want you to go! It's so much fun to exploring empty classrooms and stuff! <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if, see, uh, see if you can find the posted paper too, okay? Okay! Ready, Quibble? It seems to be putting me a lot with, like, a Sayori a bunch. Is there gonna be a time where I'm gonna get to hang out with Yuri on a Tsuki or something? Yep, let's go! Let's go! That's what I said. Sayori and I exit the club room. I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori. What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure you would make an event. I'm not sure how you could make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone's gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Uh, that sounds kind of dull. Quibble. You're not thinking about the You're not thinking about it the right way at all! It's not just about reading poems! It's about performing them! Like you say, the lines of the poems like Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moments between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now when I look in every direction, the once Preposterous field before me is but a barren wasteland! Like that! Theory, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh? <laughs> you meanie! I'm working super hard on this, you know? Uh, I know, I know. I just meant that it's pretty an ordinary contrast to your cute self. Haha, <laughs> don't say that! It's embarrassing! But I guess that means I'm doing a good job! Yeah, I guess so. Ah, I'm so excited! The festival is going to be so much fun! Suri spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Quibble, this classroom over here is empty! Let's begin the mission! The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent with time with Suri like this, but in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. I get it. So far, I've not really been given any... Oh, 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 wait, hold on. Oh, on the part when, like, if you guys remember on the part, um, the well, last video, when I had to choose between Natsuki, Yuri, and Sayori, I had three options. It was either to say Natsuki was correct, Yuri was correct, or to call help with Sayori. Oh, maybe it's because I called help with Sayori. And maybe if I sided with Yuri or Natsuki, I would have been with one of them, uh, with who I sided with. But because I asked help from Sayori, that's who I'm with. Okay, I think I see how it's going now. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the year went by, I began to haul myself up in the room one more and more. So going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads up straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here! Crayons! 
Terry pulls out a box of full of cri a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too. They're kind of dirty though. Terry starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the look crayons colors names. All right, that's one down. Don't get distracted. We still need to. Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, I dropped away by accident. Uh, oh, smack. Ah! Sarah bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayon spills all over her lap. Ow, 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 You okay? My forehead! Me! Yeah. Sarah clutches her forehead. Gee, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sierra is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the uh, the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts! Just just do it for a second. Oh, not another one of these. <laughs> Sierra slowly releases her hands from her head. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Doesn't look that bad. Ow! Sorry. Right. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. With blood dripping down all the way past her nose, uh, past her mouth, down on the ch uh, um, to the stomach and onto the floor. You look up as you realize that she bled to death. Break! Okay, but <clears throat> a bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find some uh, you some ice. Quibble? Where would I even find ice around this time? I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even with it from the page, Siri makes a silly joke. <laughs> what what are you saying? You're bleeding! Ice! I'll be right back, okay? Oh, uh, okay! I pat Sarah the shoulder and run out into the hallway. <laughs> Idiot, I'm not going to help her. I'm going to jump out this window. <laughs> A little hallway, frick! I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it will be used as an ice pack rather than a to drink. But I know Sierra likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. I swear, if I come back and Sayori's dead. No! Oh, no, no, she's alive. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Right? Sayori here. I had... Oh, I had Sierra the bottle of apple juice. Square bottle? What the... Square bottles? What the flip? It's nice and cold. Sierra opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sierra, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah! Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> you tricked me into getting you a drink. How hard did you hit your head? Sierra places the bottle against the lump on her forehead. It stings! Just bear with it, it'll be better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey Quibble! This kinda of reminds me reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh, uh, I didn't watch that show. Hey what? <laughs> eh? What do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. Yeah, this is a this is kind of why I feel like that the relationship should slightly go a bit more to Sayori, because they have been childhood friends, but, well, to be honest, as a childhood friend, that means that they would they would be, like, really close connected anyway as well, so, yeah, it's kind of complicated, because I never play dating simulators, because I'm not a judgmental person, it's, like, really bad when there's, like, multiple options. I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Oh, I'm also... I know that there's probably going to be multiple different routes, but I'm only going to I'm only going to play as the one that I'm going to do because yeah, my friend told me this game does take quite a while and it will probably be even longer, and I do not want to repeat Hollow Knight. I I like I I do not want to repeat Hollow Knight. It took me 20 episodes to finish that. It's a game that I played this year. You should actually check it out. It's really amazing. <clears throat> Sorry. Anyway. So yeah, I'm only gonna take. I'm only gonna do one route because it kind of feels wrong as well for me to choose multiple routes as well with um, girl dating stuff. We're kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, 
I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself or were afraid of getting into trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? <laughs> but in the end it was your fault because you abused me. And you made me believe it was just me. Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time too. If I wasn't rushing you to get out of the closet, you wouldn't have hit your head. Quibble! I hate you! Wait, what? It was your fault! I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me, even though I'm just a being clumsy. You're real. You're really a sweetheart. Don't call me that. I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Ugh. Hey, don't drink the apple juice. Frick you. I bought it. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Hey, well, I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Yeah. Wait, what? Do you think it'll be like this forever? Aw. Aw, oh, one thing I don't like is nostalgia. Because, um, oh, I always like find some things really sad. A bit like, um, a bit like they're like some, I seen, it was an animation I saw where it was like, this is how things were in the past and everyone was children and stuff like that. And in the future, everything changes, like you're all adults, and oh, I just hate the thought of that. It's like, it's a moment in life that you really love, but then it goes away. A bit like with manga books, um, like you love how stories go in manga books, but it comes to a point where it has to end. A bit like, I read this manga called Assassination Classroom, which was amazing, and it's so sad. It's like a, like a kid's trying to assassinate their teacher, I'm not gonna spoil why, but yeah. But basically, it's a really fun and great story. But in the in the final book, it all ends, and it's so sad just thinking of how it ends. And like a a a, a classroom like who are really great friends splits off. Oh, it's just so sad. Oh. Anyway, sorry, I'm just getting really deep into thought now. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll each end up for college or after that. So, so it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises, but, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy! Frickin' chair again, falling apart! Sari has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside when I see her deep in thoughts like this. It makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's gonna see your forehead either way. And if I hi hide it under my bangs? <laughs> Suri hops to her feet. Ah! She clutches her forehead again and her leg snaps. No. Don't set up so fast after hurting yourself. Ah! Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. Ah! Shut up! I follow Sierra out of the classroom. Sierra plays with her bangs to try and hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back. Good timing. I was just about ready to start with the sharing our poems. Oh, yeah. Eh, Sierra, your, uh, eh, Sierra, your forehead. She's fine. Don't worry about it. I was playing with crayons and sparked my forehead into the shelf. <laughs> well, anyway, were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh! I have it right! Eh! Uh, oh, freak! Sarah frantically glances around herself. I- I forgot all the stuff! Oh, come on, Sayori! You had one job! Calm down, Sayori! I have it all right here! Oh. I found the poster paper, too. Uh, sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Quibble. Uh, well, Sayori... I thought to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made an adventure! Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. 
I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too! Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your, uh, your poems? Guess I should grab guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Ooh. Who should I show my poem to first? Well, I could do everyone now. So, I first of all, I did it like one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to do it down to up. Hi again, Quibble. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I'll give my poem to Monica. Alright, it's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori like the other one that you wrote. Why is it so likely to say Ori and stuff, is it? Wait, you two are like the dy dynamic duo. Wait, is it talking about when I chose the stuff? Because I'm pretty sure I chose more for Nat Natsuki. Which, it wasn't on purpose, that was by accident, but I'm pretty sure I got more Natsuki stuff. What, is it still just to do on the decisions I make? <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I, I, I'm not shy, it's just... <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit more time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not, like, an approach bro or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's not like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah, I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? Yeah. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Still nothing... Oh, wait. I might say nothing odd has happened yet, but... I did have that random black thing... Black box coming up from the screen, whatever. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony. What the flip is that word? Of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sighing, coercing, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a tur turntable. Like playing a vanilla on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless... Dot, 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 dot. Load me. Load. What? Load me. Hey. Save me the colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, red, green. The noise, it won't stop. Like playing an endless poem of meaningless. What do you mean by load you? Oh, wait. Gosh, not. not I said flip. Dang it. Okay, now that sounds wrong, but... Okay? Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of the thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I could have liked playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about though. <laughs> and especially why there was a very long gap all the way to load me. Sometimes asking what poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be an a as abstract as physical expressions of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself uh, facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Um. Okay, that's a fourth world breaker. You want me to do it now? What if I do it now? Pfft, don't know why I got scared then. You never know when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip? Wait, is this tip even about writing? Okay, and yet yeah, now that was odd. What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening.
Was something make... Was something making her say that? Okay. That was... So yeah, that was an odd part. Eesh. I actually don't like how the closet's open and there's a chair there. Oh, what if I see a shadow back there? I'm still waiting for something creepy to happen, but then, yeah, that was unexpected. That was odd. Alright, Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Quibble. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Come for you, and that means a lot. Eh? It's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it feels like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands her poem. Alright. <clears throat> the raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an un un a diary well, what, a human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequence, well aware that the raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was in the symptom. The bread was hungry, curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. Wait, what? Wait, cutting knife was symptom. The bread was my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, my urge? Are you talking about with the knife? The moon in cements its place and reflects that much more light of it of cutting of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistened the eyes of the raccoon, my friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. On, beha on perhaps I'm merrily projecting my emotions onto the newly oh, satisfied animal. Hit my mic. Whoops. The raccoon has to has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon c becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandished my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian uh, condition. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. That was a bit dark. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. I guess uh, it's not. I guess it's not weird. It's, it's an actual poem, but. A bit un uneasy. It makes it sound like you ate the raccoon. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I begin to imagine what this po what, imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imaginary and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at a face of value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in more, my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. You feed a raccoon? Why do you keep them to yourselves? But because they're embarrassing. That people would make fun of me. Yeah, break those people! I'll slap them in a specific place. Don't you have anything like that, Quibble? Well... Yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, as some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. What should I show my poem to next, Natsuki? Natsuki, Natsuki. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better either. Phew. <laughs> huh? Phew what? Uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take it as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Uh, hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that... Wait, maybe that was a compliment. Uh, 
Glad, glad to see someone recognize my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll get as good as me someday. That's, uh... <laughs> Somebody tells me that Asuki completely missed the point. You idiot. Kinda think of... Come to think of it, this kinda reminds me of Sayari's poem from yesterday. Eh, you think so? Yeah. Well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wa oh, wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sorry has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how come, how come someone so uh, fluffy spends so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary, you little piece of... No. 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 Uh, what are you saying? But, but think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Okay. Ooh, that's a lot more. <clears throat> Amy likes spiders. I'm gonna sing this one. Let's sing this one like a nursery right now. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. No, no, no. Freaking. <clears throat> Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm a friend with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her taking, uh, talking to people. She probably talks to, about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. And one time, I was almost dying and bleeding to death. And she gave me all of her blood, her spare kidney, and her life to save me. But she likes spiders! It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. I'm gonna tell everyone. Frick the world! <laughs> Not bad, right? Why do I feel like that was a personal one? <laughs> It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. It was, it was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I know I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much more simpler analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of the poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Oh, do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It, it, it can be about anything. I want it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of if people find out. They're gonna make fun of you and think less of you. Yeah, frick them! No one gets to decide who has fun. No one gets to decide if you're an adult and you play with baby toys. They should shut up! If you're happy with it, be happy. If they judge you, then go frick themselves. Just because one person is thinking, Oh, that guy's sitting on the bench. He's a fatty. Everyone else is thinking, Oh, what a nice, lovely person to sit on the bench. Whoever the judgmental people are, frick yourselves! No one should ever judge you if you took a massive dump in the toilet and then, like, think it stinks. It's flipping science! I lost my thoughts. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares someone like what someone likes? Yeah, as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. Yeah! I think people really need to learn to respect others' likings of weird things. Huh, that's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Oh yeah, the raccoon. And how she feeds the raccoon of bread and how I assume she ate the raccoon. <laughs> huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I don't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people should make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I I guess I should not try, to, uh, try not to be so mean to her. And she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, sounds like she's learned her lesson. Hey, are they not friends? 
Are you in that Suki gonna kiss? Actually, no, 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 don't stop. Whatever thought is in your head right now, take it out. Well, I would say so. Even if I, I... what the? Oh, if you right click, it takes off the screen. Well, I can screenshot this. Whatever. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good a good one for tomorrow too. So look forward to it. Okay. Who shall I show my poem to next? Sayori, Sayorio. Hmm. Quibble, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Eh? Yeah, I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really you're really the only one who feels that way. So, eh? No way. Not even at Suki. Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Uh-huh. Eh? What, 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 what? Stop thinking of weird things, idiot! Yeah, shut up! I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? I want to kill myself. No! But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking? Let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your, it's your fault for getting into in my business all the time. Huh? I really wish that one day there would be like a date and simulator game. Where it's like, you're trying to date the girls, and you think it's just gonna always end with like, uh, I don't know, maybe the girls are like, I don't know, something's gonna happen, or like, you're gonna be with one girl. But what if someone made a story where it's like, the true victim in the story is the person you're playing as, and it turns out he has a depressing life. And in the end, you don't get any girl, any kill- oh, what the f- Okay, I'm sorry for- Why did I suggest that type of game? But I, again, it would probably be like a really- Cool, or whatever game. I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I try to explain things to you. Do you, oh, Siri? I pat Siri's head. Ha <laughs> ha, hey! I'm not a kid, you know! Are you sure about that? Hmm, maybe. Siri starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Quibble, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? But because, well... It's the first time you've written something for me. Heh <laughs> Sorry, you completely, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. Oh, heh heh heh. Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Snap. Ah! My leg! Oh, it broke! Frick! Oh! I broke my pencil! Oh, jeez. Really? Uh... Siori hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being an initiative of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. S -s -s Sorry! It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Siori clutches the desk beside her to support herself, knees shaking. Uh, I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Siori. Yeah, yeah. I grab Siori's arm and help her sit in the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh, I haven't read your poem, sorry. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles! Okay, <clears throat> I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all of my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I'm, I put the bottle in a bottle to keep it safe. Did I just... What the... I put it in a bottle, not a bottle in a bottle. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and the bottles all in a row. 
My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight makes amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friends after friends, more balls. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time, time elapsed. My, shel my empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done. I open up and in my friends, in they come. In such a hurry. Do they want that, my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelves, one after the other, horn them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. I don't get it. Holy crap! Siri, did you really write this? Of course I did! I didn't you, man? I, did I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? <laughs> yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot! And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently! I see that. It's almost, it's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out, out good, so you should feel, be proud of it. Aww, thanks! I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic! You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing is the best! I'm gonna keep writing... I'm gonna keep writing until I die! <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. Sari always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more. Uh, no more than a week later. I wonder if this one is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be, uh, pessimistic. Alright, that, that took a lot longer. <laughs> okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ah, uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Siri has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Uh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P, p, um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sierra's putting it all in all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sierra, who has been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. You think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I... I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it. Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayuri. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud for a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each other put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. Oh, sorry, you just got something in your eyelash. Get off. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings. Being intimate about with yourself. Finding new horizons! 
having fun. That's right. And it's so this reason that we're all all in this club today. Don't you want to share with the others? And it's all the reason why we're in the club today. Frick me. To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place. I know you do. I know we all do. And if if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Asuki and Yuri remained silent. Sari looked worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sari and Monica have, have been really trying hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ugh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew. Nice, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around to everyone, to at everyone else's ex expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. Haha! <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main events. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. Of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, 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 no way! Monica! This is too sudden! Well, if you can't receive your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of, a sta of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? Haha, <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. Then She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Gosh, this is taking ages. I thought it was going to do two days, but whatever. Ahem. Monica begins, begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Siori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the reciting. Oh, I thought I was going to read it, whatever. The four of us applaud. <clears throat> Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Yuri? Uh, I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It's it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she... End unit with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and grunts, glances around her as, as if she bewildered and even herself. I. It's up to me to save the situation. <laughs> I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone else joins afterwards and me and give, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Uh, thank you. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Siri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one is called My Me Me Down. Me Down. Ah, <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. Hey, <laughs> say Yuri. It's not harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try to think of your, like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in my, in your own head. In my head? Uh. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best way that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sarah begins her poem. Somehow it feels like a soft voice was made as a perfect match. 
The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on a paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Ugh. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply to someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori! <laughs> even Quibble liked it! No, oh, I hated it. I guess that's a good sign! What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivering wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean! That's... my life been practicing that kind of things. I just... I... I'm just... It's... Yeah! It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. Hehehe. <laughs> The next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay! Now, who's next? Atsuki? <laughs> don't make me go- don't make me go before Quibble. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Quibble lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Atsuki! It's fine- <laughs> I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I worked for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my poem writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive an applause anyway. So I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then, that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The, po the podium is called... It's called... Why are you looking at me? Stop! Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Where? Ah! Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, uh, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Asuki's trademark style, and its mark works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if, as if given life to the poem. Asuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite your poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put one whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a, su that's a surprise, Atsuki. I, I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it goes, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick up a poem to get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm, I'm already pre uh, pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me happy. Get your hair out of my face. No. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I, I can do this. I can do this. Alright! I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. And if it's, it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Why are you mainly impressing Monica? <laughs> right. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. They're making such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh... How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Google. You don't have to say anything. Whatever, let's go already. 
They know. Whatever. I woke home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the on the way home. Hey, Sayori. But sorry, I was spacing out. Uh, no wonder. Why did she get inside? Um, I was thinking about something earlier, like how we get to. I, I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say one day Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What, what kind of question is that? You're kind of put you're kind of putting me on the spot here. Heh. <laughs> well. Oh. Another point where I should say. Well, actually, I can save a lot though. There's like so much space. Anyway, um, I would walk home with Yuri and. Hmm. Well, I am on the. I. Why is only Yuri though? Like, where's the option for that? There's no option for that Suki or whatever. Hmm. I'm not sure if this will lead more to. I'll just go with what I can get for now. So I would, I would walk home with probably Yuri since she asked. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down. So, isn't she? She's as beautiful and smart. Is she trying to make me? Is she trying to get me into Yuri? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Ha <laughs> ha! You admitted it. Jeez, there's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's so long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Where's... Before you were just talking about how you were hoping this would go on forever. Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is, repla is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me in such a weird question. I can't just lie to her, but if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said that there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Hmm. Okay, that was weird. Okay. Death. Cheeks. Headphones. Hurt. Melancholy. Flea. Chocolate. Vanilla. Milk. Romance. Hop, chain, disarray, secretive, fireflies, raindrop, atome, valentine, excitement, and cheer! Okay, I have no clue I even got that time. Oh. Alright guys, I'm gonna save it here. Because I was not expecting that day to have been so freaking long. Whatever, okay, so... Again, not much happened, but then, yeah, we got that weird... Oh, Monica's side, whatever. <clears throat> Yeah, but we got that weird thing where Monica was, like, telling us to save and stuff. That was... Yeah, that part was weird. But that's all that happened, but whatever. <laughs> Alright, so far, I'm still kind of getting into this, because, um... I don't know, I, li I like I like, I like, like how they make their emotions. It's like... <laughs> it's like it's like a bit of a nice little funny story or whatever, right now. And even I'm interested in what's going to happen normally. Whatever. Anyway, guys... Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like it, if you like it, you've come subscribe and I'll see you all in the future. Bye!